Hello everyone, this is Ultar, and this segment is here to let you know that after about a year of producing content for Offworld Training Company, Mohawk Games contracted me out to do some QA consulting work for them. This video was made during the time that contract was active. Thank you for listening, please enjoy the video. Hello everyone, this is Ultar, and welcome to our sixth Offworld Trading Company tutorial, Advanced Buildings. Today we'll predictably be talking about the five different advanced buildings in Offworld Trading Company, what they do, and how they can be used to enhance your corporation. The five advanced buildings in Offworld Trading Company are the Patent Lab, Optimization Center, Hacker Array, Pleasure Dome, and the Offworld Market. These all have unique advantages and disadvantages, and you'll typically need at least one or two of them to win a game of OTC. We'll talk about the Patent Lab first. The Patent Lab is arguably the most complicated of the advanced buildings as it provides access to technology that can completely change the rules of Offworld. Patents such as Superconductor, Energy Vault, Perpetual Motion, and Cold Fusion all change how your company uses and produces power. Water Engine can modify your freighters to consume water instead of fuel, while teleportation removes your freighters from the game, instead immediately transporting resources around the map as your buildings consume and produce them. Meanwhile, carbon scrubbing means your buildings won't need to consume carbon anymore, and acquiring nanotech will provide you a full refund on any building you scrap. If someone beats you to the best tile on the map, pick up slant drilling and you'll be able to mine it anyways from one of the adjacent tiles, while virtual reality gives your Pleasure Dome a 50% increase in income. Last patent is my personal favorite, Thinking Machines, as it partially protects any building next to your HQ from the black market, either having the duration of the effect, like an EMP or mutiny, and only requiring half the repair cost when a building is hit by dynamite. You can see that these effects are both significant and diverse, so many players will often build a patent lab, and for very different reasons. This brings up the Patent Lab's greatest strength and weakness you are acquiring, patents. If you get the patent, no one else can obtain it for the rest of the game. But if someone beats you to a patent, tough luck, you're never going to get that one yourself. This makes the Patent Lab a frequent target of the black market effects in the mid-game, as players will always be looking for ways to ensure they pick up whatever patents they've decided they need that game. If you decide a Patent Lab is worth the risk, and the large investment of both building resources and chemicals required, also take care to defend it with holograms and goon squads, because other players will be looking to shut you out of patents if they can. With the patent lab out of the way, we can move on to much simpler buildings, and we'll start with possibly the most common advanced building, the Optimization Center. Simply put, the Optimization Center optimizes your production, increasing output of a resource at your buildings. Note that it is a resource you are increasing, not the output of a building itself. For example, if you optimize oxygen, its output is increased at both your reactors and dry ice solar condensers, but fuel and carbon from these buildings will be unaffected. Each optimization increases output of that resource by 25%, and each resource can be upgraded four times for a maximum 100% increase. Each resource costs the same amount to upgrade, a small amount of chemicals, but the cost increases each time that resource is upgraded. So if water has been upgraded twice, food once, and fuel never, water will be the most expensive in both time and chemicals, food next, with fuel being the cheapest still at its original cost. Because of this, most players will diversify upgrades across several different resources, keeping costs minimal but effective. It is not uncommon to see players with two or even three optimization centers as the effect is simple and powerful, but can be quite time-consuming. It should be noted that if the first upgrade for a resource has been started, the second one can also be started immediately. There is no need to wait for the first optimization to finish. However, each center can only work on one optimization at a time. Next up is the Hacker Array. The Hacker Array is used to directly manipulate prices on the open market. This building can trigger artificial shortages and surpluses for each resource. As expected, a resource shortage raises its price, while a surplus lowers the price. The most obvious use of the hacker array is to increase the price of a resource you're producing, and it certainly does that quite well. Another clear option is to reduce the price of a resource your opponent is producing, or that you're consuming. But things can get a little more interesting from there, especially if you develop a stockpile of a resource. This is because players will often respond to a shortage by buying into a resource, expecting it to become more valuable very soon. This often causes the resource to become more valuable than the shortage alone would have made it, and if you have a stockpile of the resource, you can sell it out from under the other players, 
making a killing and knocking the price down much lower than it started. This turns your not very valuable resource into a fistful of cash while directly removing money from your opponent's pockets and giving them a low value resource instead. The hacker ray is the only tool in the game you can use consistently to actually take money away from other players if they play into it, and that means there's always a reason to consider playing it. It is worth noting that you cannot use multiple hacker arrays to short or surplus the same resource at the same time, though they can affect different resources simultaneously. The Pleasure Dome is probably the simplest advanced building. You play it, and it sits there putting cash in your pocket. The idea behind the Pleasure Dome is that everyone needs somewhere to relax, and you're going to provide them the opportunity. There are a few tricks to the Pleasure Dome, though. Most importantly, the Pleasure Dome is tied to the game's population. This is based on how many headquarters are on the map, what level they are, what type they are, and how many habitats are on the map. This means that in larger games, the Pleasure Dome tends to be more valuable than in small games. Expansive headquarters provide the biggest bonus to the Pleasure Dome, while scavengers and scientists provide a smaller bonus, and robotic corporations, they don't have people, so they don't increase the Pleasure Dome's value at all. The higher level a corporation's headquarters, the larger the headquarters population. The larger the population, the more valuable the Pleasure Dome becomes. This means a Pleasure Dome becomes more valuable as the game goes on, so players will usually wait a while before building it. Can't wait too long though, you want to be one of the first to build a Pleasure Dome. This is because Pleasure Domes all have to share the existing population, and the value of each dome decreases the more domes that there are on the map. Wait too long to build yours, and you may find it's not worth building at all. Our last advanced building is the most important, the off-world market. This is your end-game structure, a massive launch pad to sell resources at insane prices to the asteroid miners in the belt. The off-world market is by far the most expensive structure in the game, costing tens of thousands of dollars worth of resources. That said, it is often well worth it. When on-world markets are being flooded by competitors and profits are nowhere to be found, the off-world market is always sure to bring in the capital you need. Each minute, the market will launch 100 resources at the launch pad, often at a value of five to six hundred dollars apiece. Depending on the off-world price, this can easily be thirty to forty thousand dollars in profit per launch, sometimes even more. However, because of the power and expense of this building, you must be cautious when considering if you should build it. Other players will be jealous of your fancy new source of cash, and everyone in the game will be looking to shut it down from the moment you begin construction. In particular, tools such as mutinies and dynamite are available to either steal or destroy your off-world, so if these are available, you should consider if you would rather try to keep your own market online, or simply shut down anyone else who decides to take the risk. Also, an off-world market is a very large structure, and therefore cannot be scrapped once it is finished building. There are a few more things that need to be known about all advanced buildings together. First. The advanced building's interface can be found to the right of your upgrade button in the bottom left corner of the screen. This is very, very important in particular for the off-world market, as opening the off-world market interface will show you off-world values for resources that game, which is something you want to consider from the moment the game launches if the off-world is likely to be valuable or not. Worth noting here is that the off-world prices will continue to rise throughout the game, and this should always be taken into consideration when checking this interface. Also, every single advanced building can obtain a benefit from being near another building at the neutral colony. Pleasure domes like being near habitats, patent labs near laboratories, optimization centers near machine shops, hacker arrays near offices, and off-world markets will get a benefit from being near warehouses should always consider if building the building away from your headquarters is worthwhile based on the bonuses it could receive at the neutral colony. That was a bit of a long one, but there's your introduction to advanced buildings in off-world trading company. Now that we know what fancy tools players can use, our next episode will be about how we can shut them down with the black market. But until then, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time.